Welcome back into the Not So Sober Podcast. Today we got another new special guest with us. Yes. Let us welcome in Chris Pantuso. What's up, internet? <laughs> Today, uh, a lot of y'all don't know him. He's new to the area, straight yep. out of San Antonio, Texas. Just mm-hmm. moved here a couple months ago. Yep. Uh, but he's got a lot going on, got a lot going for himself. Uh, he's a lot of... A lot of y'all might want to actually get in touch with him to better your business <laughs> and such. Very uh, knowledgeable. And man. we'll Very have him kind of explain that a little bit here in a second. But he he's doing a lot of stuff, uh, finding a couple different spots here in town. Uh, he really does support North Omaha a lot. He, yes, uh, he really especially does. Especially the food. You know, when you see us, we all kind of got some weight to us. <laughs> <laughs> And he loved him some barbecue, uh, you know, straight out of Texas. But uh, mm-hmm. to get into it, man, Chris, go ahead and tell the people who you are, what you kind of do for a living, a little bit about your background yeah, and yeah, yeah. whatnot. You got it. First and foremost, Caleb and Terrell, thank mm-hmm. y'all very much. I was joking with you earlier that uh, I'm a virgin when it comes to podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> y'all guys have been tender and loving. So <laughs> thank you. Know, you. Very uh, gentle. Very a lot gentle. of people that came on here, we didn't pop their cherries. So. <laughs> We're very gentle. Well, We'd just, be very gentle. Just to let the audience know, bourbon and bacon, I'm happy. <laughs> uh, this fat man is happy. But in uh, answer to your question, I'm a San Antonio native, uh, youngest of six kids in a big Italian uh, Cajun French family. Uh, my dad was a chemical engineer and mechanical engineer. Okay. Uh, mom was a piano professor at, uh, Incarnate Word College in San Antonio, which is now the University of the Incarnate Word. Pop got his degree at the greatest university on earth, Texas A&M. I don't, I don't, I don't care where y'all went to school. So I, I am. It's going to be some controversy. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, as when, when I met these two guys, my wife and I were doing a pub crawl at uh, St. Patrick's Day. And uh, y'all were just kind of hanging out. And yeah. we were kind of hanging out. And I was like, well, shit, come on over. And yeah. I kept pulling a chair out for you. And you were like, no, no, no. I said, dude, sit down and shut up and let's talk. Yeah. <laughs> and and it, it, it's crazy. Cause yeah. It, it, it's, I feel like we created a good relationship and hopefully yep. a long relationship. Yes, right, yes. right. Um, but um, in direct answer to your question, what do I do and how in God's name did I get into Omaha? Exactly. Um, yeah, that's really what I want to hear. <laughs> right. My uh, wife was working at a high-end luxury resort in Katy, Texas. Okay. Uh, the, the outfit is called Oak Park was the name of the facility. She was on the sales side of the house. Um, the company that owns Oak Park is based in Lincoln, Nebraska. Okay. A company okay. called Resort Lifestyle Community. And um, they have 54 retirement communities spread throughout the United States. Good company, uh, very well managed. Right, right. Um, I had just recently uh, closed a business that I had been working on for a long time, was depressed as hell, uh, put my head up my ass and was just like i'm gonna live off of my savings because i had done pretty, <laughs> i had done pretty well and veronica my wife uh who was working in oak park in katie texas katie texas is about an hour south of where our property was in waller texas which is far north houston oh, okay. katie okay. is far south houston okay so i always joke that um Every day at five o'clock, you know, when she got off work, mm-hmm. yep. she'd drive through Houston traffic, finally get to our place in Waller, Texas, and I'm in my underwear and my <laughs> T-shirt. I haven't done the dishes, haven't done the laundry. Mm-hmm. My there's an ass print in the Lazy Boy because I was watching TV all day because I was depressed, man. I've been working yeah. on this company that I was trying to save stupidly with credit card debt. Never, ever, ever say try to save your dream with credit card debt go get other people's money yes not not friends or family and we'll talk about that in a minute but um 
one day Veronica comes through the front door and says, "Yeah, you know, God damn it, I'm sick and tired of you just being a fucking bump on a log." <laughs> yeah. and, and it's what I needed. I yeah, needed her definitely. to yeah. kick my ass. Yes, yes, yes. And RLC uh, Resort Lifestyle Community, the company based in Lincoln that owns Oak Park and the uh, other properties, they have a unique business model. They hire couples to manage their resorts. Their uh, it's usually fifty five and up. Okay. Uh, and these things are sweet, man. There's a five star restaurant. You've got uh, a lot of activities. They're usually about two hundred, three hundred residents that are in typically about a four story building. Valet parking, I mean, Damn. maid service. I can't yeah. wait till I get all. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Now, now they're, they're, they're kind of pricey. They're like five, six grand a month. Oh, Jesus. But absolutely everything is taken care of. Okay. Everything to sustain life except your cell phone bill and your car insurance. So pretty much okay. everything yeah. else is, is done. Now, I, I don't know about y'all, but... I've never worked with my spouse before. And, I have yeah. a little bit. I, I mean, it, it, it's not ideal. If yeah. you know how to manage, you can manage, but it, it's... Well, see, that's a great point. <laughs> yeah, I, I, never, I, never I, I knew Veronica, smoking hot Latina chick. I'm 57, she's 66, and she looks like she's 35. She's fucking gorgeous. Um, great cook, great person, a very good salesperson, too. She had managed before. I had managed a lot. Right. Okay. All right. My management style is 180 degrees opposite of her, her <laughs> management style. I'm, my genetic code is we get shit done fast, we do it right, and we do it with class. Yes. Okay. Yep. Her management style is I'll get to it when I want to get to it. <laughs> I'm like, no, baby, no, no. So that caused a huge disconnect when we we she comes home one day i'm getting ahead of myself she comes home one day from work she goes you know honey rlc knows you because we'd go to parties to get corporate parties and right, functions right. and uh-huh. stuff yeah. and so me being just you know impressive as hell that's a joke by the way <laughs> uh, i got to know the owners of rlc pretty well and they said oh, you know nice. why don't Veronica, my bride, says, why don't, you know, we put a resume in together as a couple because they hire couples. Right. And they can never find enough couples because couples typically don't work well together. Yeah. 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 And so I'm like, well, honey, you've been divorced twice. I've been divorced twice. <laughs> We're going to kill each other if we see each other oh, yeah, every yeah. fucking day. Every day. day. Yeah, 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 day. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, and that, so. I, I feel like that's the biggest problem, though. It, correct. Correct. But what was so interesting is from a division of labor perspective, once we got assigned, <laughs> uh, we went through the interviewing process of like fucking five months, man. Yeah, we went through we went through some in-depth couples interviewing. And in hindsight, they were really seeing how well we worked together in mm, the interviews. Oh, yeah, you yeah. know, was I being a dick? Was she <laughs> being a diva? You know, and we, we worked well t- together in the interview process. But of course, we weren't managing anything, so <laughs> yeah, I didn't yeah, know yeah. her her turtle slow turtle style right. and my little roadrunner style. So that <laughs> that didn't mix at all. Anyway, we go through the process. We get uh, 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 extended an offer to join RLC as a couple, and we go to training in Albuquerque, New Mexico, where one mm-hmm. of the best performing. Uh, of the 54 uh, facilities that RLC has, one of the best performing ones is in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. So we go up there to this training class, getting to know the folks, mm-hmm. and we're thinking, okay, we're we're going to be assigned something, you know, a kick-ass property like right, Albuquerque. Right, right. And we get assigned the shittiest performing. <laughs> oh God, this Let's fucking see how good y'all were. Yeah, this fucking place that we were assigned to in West Omaha was the very no it was the second one that rlc had built 22 years ago beautiful facility fairly well managed they had like six uh uh, managers before us in like a six-year period so i'm like hmm that's not a good sign right right right. if nobody's sticking around right 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 right. and so i'm wondering 
what what the hell's going on? They they couldn't keep a maintenance guy. Well, the, usually there's two maintenance people. The older the property, the more maintenance people you need. Right. Yeah. yeah. I found out that this four story beautiful facility was built on a former dump. The like mm. a landfill dump. <laughs> and the the contractor must not have stabilized the foundation well mm-hmm. enough because yeah. this eighteen year old building was starting to settle and the six inch sewer mains, the cast iron sewer mains mm-hmm. were starting to crack. Ooh. Mm. So Every time you walked in the front door that you're being charged five grand a month, it smells like a fucking fart. Yeah. I'm like, Oof. no, we, we got to get this mm, shit fixed. Gotta, yeah, yeah got to get sure. that fixed. So I'm working like 100 hours a week after we get assigned uh, Maple Ridge in West Omaha. Our uh, son in Houston had just had a baby girl, so... I'm a grandfather. Veronica's a grandma. Okay, congratulations. Yeah, thank you, yeah, thank you. Gorgeous, gorgeous kid. And Veronica's like, <laughs> I love oh, this, yeah. my grandbaby. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the the depression that I went through trying to save a company and she kicked my ass and pulled me out of, it was now her turn. Mm-hmm. So I, I said, baby, you, you I, I, I manage fast, you manage slow as shit. So you go ahead and sleep in until 10 o'clock every morning because right. you're depressed because you miss your grandbaby. Because mm-hmm. I miss the grandbaby. She's yeah. fucking gorgeous. And she's got two sons that are just fucking awesome as shit, both, both back in Texas. And uh, so I'm working like a madman trying to clear the fart smell. Got plumbers coming in, digging up cast iron. And mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, this is bullshit. I'm working too fucking hard. Mm-hmm. She's working too hard. This just ain't working out. Right, so, right. Uh, after about three months, we, we had uh, one of the good things that I'm I'm pretty strong at is what's called business process reengineering. Um, every company on earth, including this podcast, yeah, yeah, yeah. y'all do things in a systematic way. Yes. Right. A yes. to B, B to C, C to D. For sure. Ninety yep. percent of American companies. A to B, B to D, E to F, F to P. Well, no, there's some steps here that, that y'all are missing. <laughs> right, yep. right. And the reason they miss those steps is because that's always how it's been done. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, ConAgra Brands or, or uh, what's an old company here in Omaha? I'm five months old in Omaha, so I'm still learning. <laughs> uh, uh, it's a bunch you, of old yeah, companies. Yeah. I mean, uh, Union Pacific. Yeah. Uh, well, Union Pacific is a damn very well managed company. Uh, but well. in, in any event, a lot of companies, well, we've always done it this way. Yeah. So what business process reengineers do, we go in and we talk to executives and we say, um, why do you do it this way? Right. We force them to think mm-hmm. about their process okay. and explain why they do. So. Make them think outside the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah well, yeah. more importantly, just fucking make them think. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. a lot of times that's the biggest problem. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, right, right. Because y'all guys are smart as shit. Even though we were drinking at the bar, y'all were making a lot of good feedback and a lot of good comments. And most importantly, y'all were immediately authentic enough to say, I don't have a fucking clue. Yeah, right. And, yeah. and then you go find people that have a fucking clue. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so we had put a lot of processes in place. I felt comfortable that I wasn't leaving 300 residents in the lurch when we said, we're fucking out of here. Yeah. Right. And so I moved. We got a Airbnb in the Midtown Omaha, the beautiful little place. Uh, she got a job at a, a really what Maple Ridge should be at a place called Fountain View. It's another high end, very high end resort. The, the these people are spending money like six, seven grand, <laughs> like white glove yeah. waiters delivering oh, food. Oh Jesus! Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. she. That's not I, 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 I can't ever afford. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't. <laughs> well, Even if I could, I don't think I would. Well, and that's a great point, man. So. Veronica gets a job immediately because she's fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. And she looks at me and she goes, well, what are you going to do? And I said, well, we don't intermingle our finances because I lost half my shit twice for right. two divorces. And so I said, honey, we, we're never doing this. You'll have your own money. I have my own money. Mm-hmm. 
I, I pay for the majority of shit, and then when we go out, she pays stuff. Right. So she's got mad money, and she's comfortable with that. And I said, well, I'll just transfer assets from the companies that I had back in Texas. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do. Um, I run an organization called Moonlight Advisors. Um, it was started in 1951 by mm -hmm. my father, Blassie. And he would say, well, remember, Blassie rhymes with classy. So <laughs> that, that's what you call him. <laughs> I said, yes, Dad. And he, he started it purely on a whim. Uh, he... He started Texas A&M in 1951, graduated in 1954 with a chemical engineering degree and a mechanical engineering degree with honors. Oh, okay. Smart that's, motherfucker. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. very smart. To graduate yeah. with honors, I mean, hey. <laughs> yeah, and, and whether it's from Jersey Tech or, or what's the community college here, MCC? MCC. Metro. Oh, yeah, yeah. MCC. it's still, you know, School is school. Yeah, yeah. school is school. School, school ain't for yeah. everybody, but no, no. This dude, dude, God, he's rolling over in his grave that I called dad. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah that's not classy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not very classy. Yeah, call me out on it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Pop had a photographic memory of the periodic table. Oh. Um, he had a Sears and Roebuck catalog. I'm, I'm really dating us. <laughs> Back before there were cell phones and the internet, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got this big ass directory called Sears Roebucks that you could buy toilet paper and a house. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. And he had a, a manual called a Chilton manual before there was YouTube yeah, the videos. Oh, yeah. You still go, buy the Chilton. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You go to the car or whatever. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And so. He had uh, Funkin' Wagnalls encyclopedia that mom used to get when, <laughs> yeah. when she would buy enough groceries at the grocery store. You'd get a book. Yep. And so well before the internet, and Pop would always say, you know, the answers are in that book. He mm -hmm. says, the answers to all of life questions are in two books, Funkin' Wagnalls encyclopedia and the Bible. <laughs> uh, all right pop all right <laughs> and so whenever i had a math question or a school question i'd go to him and said pop you know can you help me with this he goes have you checked <laughs> funk and wagner i said no you want me to check the bibles it's is John the Baptist going to do my <laughs> my algebra? <laughs> and then he'd slap me upside the head and say don't be blasphemous you little shit go try funk and wagner's anyway he really taught me to be self-directed in trying to solve your own problems. Mm -hmm. So Pop, God rest his soul, he passed about eight years ago. But he started Moonlight Consiglieri's. In the Italian mafioso world, a consigliere is mm -hmm. the right-hand man of mm -hmm. the Don. Yep. Nobody reports to him. And the only guy he reports to is the Don. Okay. So dad was the Don. Mm -hmm. My brother Mike, Vic and Sam weren't smart enough to be the consigliere. <laughs> so he said, Chris, you're going to be the consigliere. I need you to do it. Yeah, and I pray to God, Mike, Vic, and Sam watch this uh, <laughs> podcast. They're going to kick my ass. And so in the Italian tradition, much like the Hispanic tradition, mm -hmm. the youngest, I'm the baby of the family, the youngest is automatically stupid. Yeah. And, yeah. and Nothing could be further from the truth. So, Pop, uh, what he would do as Moonlight Consigliere, and I always asked him, I said, why the hell did you call it Moonlight? And he said, he puffed his chest up. Well, our advice is so good, we can, you can lead your startup company out of chaos by the light of the moon. Okay. I was like, damn, like that. that's actually pretty cool. I like that a lot. Like, yeah, like yeah. That, that was lot. real smooth. That yeah, was real yeah. smooth. You know, because it's not a lot of light that comes off of the moon. Right, So, right. I mean, so it better be good. Lead, you know, yeah, that's... that's. I like that. that yes, smooth. sir. That was smooth. And so, uh, Pop had Moonlight Consigliere. He and his uh, NASA buddies and his Brainiac engineers, because uh, he was a construction engineer for a long, long time. Okay. At a company called HB Zachary Construction in San Antonio, Texas. Okay, okay. Um, old man Zachary uh, was a graduate of the greatest university on earth, which we now know is <laughs> Texas A&M. Very good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, can't win a can't win an SEC title. But <laughs> some, someday, you know, we know how to fire football coaches with Jimbo <laughs> Fisher. Yeah. 
Yeah. Fuck, we gave him 45 million bucks <laughs> the day he resigned with another 30 million coming. And I'm one of the idiots that give money every month to allow that to happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, anyway. Um, <sighs> Pop was doing uh, his main job uh, at HB Zachary Construction. And then on the side, he would spin out uh, a startup company. Okay. And I was like, God damn, Dad, that's a pretty good side gig. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so <laughs> all you entrepreneurs out there, get a real job yeah. and then work your passion on the side. Right. So when Pop died, uh, the ownership, well, ownership, he never really incorporated. He was a sole proprietor. Okay. So you don't have to incorporate. You can be a sole proprietor. There's some positives and some negatives, and we, we may talk about that in detail. But when Pop died, uh, operational control f- uh, flowed to me, and I decided to change from Moonlight Consigliere's mm-hmm. to Moonlight Advisors. Okay. Because yeah, yeah. Moonlight Consigliere sounded like I was going to go kill you if you didn't pay <laughs> right. me. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And you, know, you didn't pay your money. Yeah, right. 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 Yeah. <laughs> and I told Pop, I said, dude, we're – Dude, forgive me, Dad. <laughs> I said, Dad, we're not the mob. People are going to think we're going to kill them if they don't pay their bill. And he said, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was like, you're you fucking genius, your Dad. Yeah. You are. Ge- and and our accounts, our accounts payable was always pretty slim, pretty slim. Yeah, no, yeah. I always cool. joked that my former drug addict brother Mike would. Uh, Go break some kneecaps because he liked doing that kind of shit. <laughs> <laughs> so when uh, when Pop passed, I decided to uh, change from Moonlight Consigliere to Moonlight Advisors. And since 1991, uh, I've been responsible for the spin out of 14 companies. Okay. Um, most um, entrepreneur startup that are called incubators. You know, yeah, yeah. Like a mama hen sits on an egg right, and right, incubates yeah. the little baby chick and you want to push them out as soon as you can so they can fly on their own that's what we do um mostly we have our our tagline is since 1951 moonlight has been uh monetizing the passions of very passionate people and since 1991 14 of those companies we have helped monetize the passions. And so we always say uh, artists come to us, mm-hmm. whether it's actual artists like a painter right. or a sculptor, but in the technology world, it's called intellectual property art, IPA. Yep. Yep. Not not the beer, but... <laughs> <laughs> so we have seven companies that... Uh, They, inventors and innovators came to us. They found us on the web or actually, actually not, not the web because we don't have a website at all on purpose. Um, That's a, was a specific uh, decision I made when I took over control because the best advertising on earth is word of mouth. Bingo. Everybody knows word of mouth. So don't waste your money on social media email campaigns and trying to buy ad revenue. What our curriculum at Moonlight Advisors, because people pay us anywhere from five grand to fifty grand as a retainer right. okay. to get the knowledge in my team's head. And most the the brilliant people that come to us, they're brilliant. Yeah, yeah for but, sure. Yeah, but yeah. they don't know how to sell. Exactly. Yeah. And absolutely nothing happens in business until until you sell something gets sold yeah you right? gotta now, make money right and this is interesting because a lot of brilliant people whether they're artists literally artists painters and sculptors or they have innovative technologies mm-hmm. they're so brilliant they think they know how to sell they're so passionate about their stuff mm-hmm. that the easiest person to lie to is yourself. Is yourself. Yep. Yep. So everybody in the innovation world talks about the sales cycle. Oh, I, I know how to, you know, do an email. I'm going to go buy a thousand uh, email list of which half of it is probably crap. <laughs> um, but uh, that's how I'm going to make money. I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a, uh, 
um, shopping cart on my website and mm-hmm. it's going to be all internet based and uh, okay maybe 10 percent of your revenue will actually come from that right the absolute best thing that we teach our students is nothing beats what we call g-o-t-o goto get out of the fucking office exactly i, I, I threw the f in there <laughs> so, and what you do is you go knock on a door you don't make a phone call. Telemarketing is a waste of time. Email blasting is a waste of time. Mm-hmm. If you're passionate about what you do, go knock on a door. Yeah. You need one door. Everybody's going to say no because they don't know you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who gives a shit? Right. Have a thick skin because the every time somebody says no, you're one step closer to a yes. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's the key. And so we teach students um not the sales cycle but the buying cycle okay when you look at a decision like this fantastic makers mark which is a sponsor of not so sober podcast hey, is that, thank you, sir. Is that pretty smooth um it's called aida a, uh, awareness interest decision and action you know man i i like booze i like angels envy i like maker's mark you know i'm gonna be aware that whoa there's something called four roses i'm now aware that mm-hmm. there's something else out there right mm-hmm. right so how was i aware i looked and i probably heard word of mouth yeah. right yep, yep. like when we were hanging out at the bar yes. yeah for sure yeah. and then because i I'm psycho about wine and cars and cigars, and I'm now kind of psycho about booze. So <laughs> I move from awareness to interest real quick. Yeah, yeah. And those are the kind of prospects that when you go knock on a door and you talk to somebody in person, because mm-hmm. it's easy to blow somebody off on an email. You hit the oh, lead. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. It's easy to hang up the phone when you get cold called. Mm-hmm. Well, it's kind of hard when somebody's staring you in the face and, you know, you're in your underwear and you're like, okay, you're at my door. What the, what, what the fuck you want to do? Yeah, yeah. I dealt with that the other day, actually. Yeah. Somebody yeah. came knocking on the door trying to sell the internet as I'm in my bathrobe and I'm just sitting there like, okay. Yeah. You're almost done with this yet? Because I don't want to be a dick and slam well, exactly. the door on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I listen. You're forced to listen right. to yeah, it all. Yep, so. yep. Well, I'm, I'm, I could be a dick, but I'll give somebody who's knocking on my door who comes by my table at a bar or uh, at my office or something mm-hmm. i'll give them the time of day because right. i've been there compared to somebody that calls my phone though if you call my yeah. phone i'm not even yeah, not, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> everybody looks at yeah. caller id and says, exactly mm-hmm. not in my phone later yeah mm-hmm. so but uh, and a lot of very brilliant people they don't have that confidence that so but i tell them look a i d a if if you educate somebody mm-hmm. don't sell somebody educate somebody on your passion don't even talk about the fucking product talk about what it makes you feel how it makes you feel okay and then they'll say well god damn the guy's smiling his eyes are twinkling what the, <laughs> what the fuck is the product what right, is this right, what right, is it? right and you'll get there so have a little bit of mystery just like trying to bang a woman there's you're in lust for a short period of time yeah, 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 yeah. and then love hopefully for a long period of time yeah, yeah. my two divorces uh, I, <laughs> yeah. so but and I, i've learned that you can stoke lust in a relationship you can stoke lust in a company too okay so you got some people that absolutely love apple right mm-hmm. uh apple iphones i absolutely hate them I'm an Android dude, so yeah, me too. and I'm passionate about Android. So we we've talked about awareness, interest, and the decision is usually pretty self-evident, and then the action is you go buy the product or service. All right, welcome back in to the Not So Sober Podcast. Let's uh, hop back in where we kind of left off here, Chris. We were talking about sales cycle and buying cycle. Right, right, right. And uh, it was interesting. We we had a break, and mm-hmm. I had some of the best pizza I've ever put in this fat Italian's mouth by Caleb's girl, Ty. Yes, correct. Who's correct. going to be selling cookies and cupcakes and 
all kind of amazing shit at the farmer's market. So yep, yep, I'm yep. plugging Ty right now. Shameless plug. So, yeah. No <laughs> doubt. And so when she goes to the farmer's market Saturday, like tomorrow or? No, it's, uh, I don't, I believe they don't start until May. I think it's like the first weekend in okay. May, I believe. You go find this woman's booth and eat her stuff because it's good. It is. It really is. Thank you. Thank it you. Was... I, I know she appreciates that a lot. Well, and what I just did is an example of the buying cycle 2.0. Okay. Because when we were talking upstairs, a lot of micro entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. they're so excited when the credit card goes through the square mm -hmm. attached to your phone. Everything's great. Right. But you're not tracking a street address and or an email address and or a cell phone. Yes. So the reason I always focus on that is the easiest customer to get is the one you already got. Is the one you he already got. that earlier. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so honest to God, if Ty, who had, she made this incredible fresh dough from scratch, chicken and ranch shit that I was licking the pot. It was so good. <laughs> if she says, Chris, I've got this uh, pepperoni thing, I'm not even going to second guess. I'm going to go eat the whole fucking pot. <laughs> so that's an example of awareness, A-I-D-A. -I, -A. I wasn't even aware that Ty could cook this well right. until I walk in and she's cooking bacon. And, you know, I'm a fat guy that loves bacon. Don't we all? And I immediately, <laughs> I immediately went into interest right. mode, thinking, "All right, I, I see this pizza thing on the." She hadn't cooked the pizza yet, so I automatically evolve into interest. And my decision, as you can tell from my figure, <laughs> I'm going to eat. And then the action is okay. What else does she have? So yeah. that little bit of mystery is always a good thing. Just right. like when we talked earlier about. When you're trying to court a woman or a guy or a dog, whatever you're into, I don't mm. care. <laughs> um, that little bit of mystery is golden. There's yeah. there's so much profit in that little bit of mystery. Yes, yes. And so AIDA is the four steps in the buying cycle. Um, capture the street address. Make sure you're asking their permission. You know, right. And joke that, you know, I'm not going to stalk you because, of course, that's what they're thinking yeah, right what they think. and you're gonna sell their cell number and their email address to a spam let's say no no i just i'm thinking about trying sheet cake or or ty's gonna come up with uh pudding or something mm -hmm. and you know chris uh, you said you liked my pizza you think you might want to try my pie mm -hmm. fuck yeah i want to try your pie mm -hmm. right so i am now on her taste committee so, or give it some kind of fancy title. Yeah, yeah, you're right. the you're the senior VP of brand awareness, or you know, <laughs> whatever. Mm -hmm. People like to feel like they're important, right? Yes. And if you actually treat them like you are, because that's great feedback. Yeah. If I bite into her pudding and it's a piece of shit, I will tell her, "No, nah, I don't think you yeah, want to do like this." That. What's up with the pizza still? Right, right, right. right, right, right. <laughs> but that's incredibly valuable information to tie. And Definitely. don't get your feelings hurt. You know, just mm -hmm. do something else. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, but, but more importantly, just like every no is the first step to a yes, yeah. I just said no to pie. Well, that's me or pudding. Well, that's me. Maybe I'm some Texan idiot that doesn't like pudding. And right. Yeah. Like we, my, my bride, Veronica, and I went to a uh, winery in Iowa and I don't like sweet wine, but apparently Nebraskan and Iowans love sweet wine because he can't make enough sweet wine, <laughs> whereas my palate likes, you know, more of kind of smooth stuff. And he poured me the sweet wine. He was so proud because he sells a shitload of it. Yeah, yeah. I took a sip and I spit it out. He was like, like floored. I said, yeah. I, it, it's not personal. It's just, it's just, that's not what I like. My bingo, bingo. And boy, you thought I would have killed his child. <laughs> <laughs> and so A I D A, the, those steps can go very, very quick. Uh, and it's usually inverse related to the price of your product or service. 
the cheaper the product or service, you have less to risk, and right. so you move through AIDA fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's a hundred thousand dollar engagement ring, you're gonna take your time. Oh yeah, yes, you are. Yes, you oh, are. Yeah. But you only need to sell one hundred thousand yeah. dollar engagement ring a year, and you're six percent commission. You're doing all right. Anyway, um, what's a mirror to the four stages of the buying cycle? are the four P's of marketing. There's product, price, placement, and promotion. Okay. Sales is a subset of promotion. Most people, as we talked in the first section segment, um, bright, intelligent people think, oh, I'm going to do email, and that's the key promotion. Yeah, yeah. Or I'm going to do telemarketing once I get some money. Or my advice is, don't spend money on an email list. Don't spend money for a telemarketing service. Don't spend money on buying a list of anything, it's not a database. Go knock on your neighbor's door because mm -hmm. they know you. Right. And say, hey, I'm thinking about building uh, nuclear submarines. Would you like to try one? Fuck no. <laughs> so, but do you know anybody that would like to yeah, test a nuclear might, submarine? Yeah. Somebody. You, correct. You got to know somebody. At correct. Least one person. Correct. So always go to your friends and family. Do not ask them for money. Ask them for feedback because sure. they love you and oh, they'll yeah. tell you, you are retarded <laughs> if you think somebody's going to test a nuclear submarine. Well, that's good information. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Definitely. And so they will give you good feedback. Never, ever, ever ask a friend or a family member for money to fund your dream and never ever ever use credit cards to fund your dream okay i was seventy five thousand bucks in debt filed bankruptcy 12 years ago and pulled myself out of that because i was trying to save a company yeah. which was stupid so my fico score as of this morning was 543 that's horrible yeah. and i want it to go to zero so the FICO score, if y'all don't know, um, but we offer financial literacy courses at another company that I'm involved with. Um, FICO is your personal credit rating for personal debt, like a Visa card or a MasterCard okay. or a JCPenney card or a Hy-V card. The scale is from 300 to 850. If you're 850, you can get a loan from Satan. Yeah. If you're 300, God won't even give you money. <laughs> Most Americans are around 640 to 650, which yeah. is average. Um, but the reason my FICO score is five, six, uh, 546 mm -hmm. and dropping fast is because I don't have enough data at the three credit rating agencies for them to generate a score. Okay. So that's a good thing for me. Right. Because I like to hoard cash. Ooh. And I have very little in my savings, very little in my checking. I've got a buttload in Vanguard Capital, which is like a fidelity investment. Ooh. And I do not stock speculate. I do have an E Trade account, and occasionally I'll do some individual stock speculation. But I tell all of our uh, financial literacy clients, um, put your money, pay yourself first. Y'all guys got real jobs. Right, yes. 20 bucks a month. Pay, I mean, okay, what's 20 bucks? It's nothing. But y'all are young. You have time and compounding interest on your side. Mm -hmm. So put 20 bucks a month, automatically draft it out of your checking account, because most HR departments... Mm -hmm will allow you to take up to four drafts of your paycheck. Okay. You can go in direct deposit. You can go into the company 401k. Mm -hmm. And then you can go into an investment fund. Mm -hmm. What I tell people okay. is pick a fund that tracks the NASDAQ index or the S&P 500. And I'm going to keep it simple. Over a 10-year period, if you're making 15% on your money over 10 years, it'll double. Okay, so great. I have 20 bucks a month times 
12 months is 240 bucks. Mm-hmm. I doubled a 480. Well, so fucking what? Well, that's double. Yeah. yeah. It's and, more than what you put in there. Right. But as y'all's income grows, yeah. as you continue to raise the ladder, go up the corporate ladder, that 240 becomes 2,400. Mm-hmm. It becomes 20,400 because you're not noticing that you're paying yourself first. Don't change the percentage that gets drafted as your paycheck goes up. You'll it's why nobody realizes how much money they pay in taxes because it's gone because right. all you Before see, you see it, yeah. is the you net see is deposit. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So ride the psychological stupidity of humans, <laughs> me and, me included. <laughs> yeah. And automatically draft it to pay yourself. Um, over a 10-year period of time, as I mentioned, a 15% return doubles your money. Guess what the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 average over the last 10 years? I have no clue. Uh, yeah, I have no clue. Good. That, that's, I, I like the authenticity. <laughs> yeah. They're not I lying. I'm not yeah, going to lie I, to I, you. I don't, I don't watch any stocks. Yeah. I've always talked about getting into them, right. but I've never – took the leap of right. faith yet the nasdaq returned 117 wow. percent okay that's a little bit more than 15 percent. Oh, oh yeah Fair. just a yeah. little bit so you're quintupling your money right so that 240 bucks becomes a thousand bucks and don't read the statements when they email them to you every month from fidelity or or blackrock or there's there's mm-hmm. a lot of places that you can get what's called an index fund that tracks the NASDAQ or the S&P. Okay. Have it drafted out of your paycheck just like your taxes okay. and learn to live on less. So what I tell entrepreneurs, the reason you're not going to fund your dream on credit card debt, the reason you're not going to ask friends or family is you're going to go get three roommates to spread your expenses out and you're going to go get a second job. So... I work Monday through Sunday from 6 a.m. to 10 Mm p.m. Like right now, I'm working. Yeah. Yeah. Drinking, eating incredible pizza, smoking, and fucking around with y'all two guys? (laughs) This this ain't working. (laughs) So when you're passionate about what you do and you've learned how to monetize it, the old saying, you never work a day in your life. Well, I don't. I'm either playing or working, and I don't know what what the difference is. Yeah, yeah. So... I've told my three daughters, I said, none of y'all are required to go to college because college ain't for everybody. Um, If you want to go in the military, go. If you want to learn how to weld, weld. If you want to learn how to fix engines, Mm -hmm. fix engines. But do something that you're not going to wake up every morning and say, God damn it, I got to go to work again. Exactly. Then you're going to be in the grave early or you're just going to be pissed off and I'm going to pontificate here, but. Since this is my soapbox tonight, happiness is not a destination. It's not a journey. Mm -hmm. It's a fucking decision. Exactly. So you either wake up every morning thinking, oh, shit, I got to go to work, and you're pissed off all day. Or, wow, God, thank you. I woke up today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And from there on, it's cool. I I love telling the story of my uh, middle daughter, Natalie, uh, who now goes by Joel. Uh, she's a trans kid, fucking brilliant kid. We uh, would go walking on hikes out in the woods, uh-huh. camping, and yeah. and we would always have these deep thoughts. And I'd tell her, you know, honey, why, why is it if you can lead a horse to water but you can't make him drink? And she would say, well, probably because he already drank, Dad. <laughs> so, well, fuck, I didn't think of that. <laughs> and then one day I, I threw something at her. I said, you know. The, the glass is, you know, it's either half empty or half full. You know, it depends on sure. whether you're pouring or you're drinking. And she goes, well, Dad, the glass is always full. I said, well, okay, honey, but explain yourself. She goes, it's half full of water, of course. And the other half, it's full of air. Yeah. And the hair on the back of my head stood up. I was like, <laughs> that's a Nobel Prize. Ooh, that's actually a great answer. Yeah, yeah true, great true. Great answer. It's and right and I love telling that story because you hit the nail on the head. You either, you're pissed off that it's half full yeah. or it's half empty. You know, and that's what my grandma always yeah. told us. My grandma and my grandpa both, rest yeah. his soul. 
uh, it was always, you know, being rich is all a mindset. Yeah, yeah. You know, because you can make 40000 a year and be so comfortable where you're at, yeah. you're rich because you're rich in your soul, you yeah. know? Yep. And, that, and that, that, that's always stuck with me, you know? I'm only 22, but I have everything I can yeah. ask for. Yeah. So in my mind, my mind personally, I'm not where I want to be, but yeah. I'm rich for what I am and yeah. who I am, you know? So yeah. that's always something that stuck that's with awesome, me because Caleb. of that, because of it's just... <laughs> It's all a mindset, yeah. how you look yeah. at things. And, and some people, my one of my ex-wives specifically would say, well, you're just looking at life through rose-colored glasses. Well, yeah, I'd rather look at it positively than being right. pissed off like you yeah, every fucking exactly. day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So sure. um, it's also uh, one of the things that uh, we were talking about earlier. Again, it, it's a decision, and, and it's your perspective of mm-hmm. how how you want to move through life. Do I always want to be upbeat and happy? Yes. Yes. I always want to be upbeat and happy. Am I always? Fuck no. Because life throws you a curveball. Yeah, Somebody shits on you at work. Somebody yeah. slices a tire because you fucked their friend or something. <laughs> so, you know, there's enough negativity in the world to fuck you up. Oh, yeah. There's not enough positivity. Like what y'all were saying earlier, one of the things y'all really want to accomplish with this podcast Mm -hmm. is to uplift some people. Exactly. exactly. Well, golly, what makes you think you can uplift people? Because you're doing it. Exactly. Fuck everybody else. You know? Yeah. And and that's exactly how we took the leap was just like, yep. even if we get not a single person to watch this, we're at least trying. We'll at least try. Well, and, and again, this is not very profitable advice but y'all guys are buds and you're having fun exactly so if makers mark never comes through with money who gives a shit exactly i got to eat hang out with y'all dudes drink and smoke we got to have a good fuck time. y'all man yeah, <laughs> y'all aren't here yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. Have a good, it's yeah, always exactly. a good time on a podcast yeah always. and yeah. and again man I, we met these guys at a bar and i have over do you remember what it was about how the conversation started no, no. A plate of nachos. Your wife was curious if the nachos were any good. <laughs> that's how I started. Boy, and that that's Veronica, my bride. She's a foodie. Kind of pull those glasses down. And, Are you going to eat that? She's goddamn right. I paid for it. Uh, I'm going to eat every single one of them. And so then we talked about cigars, and we, y'all are asking about Moonlight. And I remember talking about blind, irrevocable trusts. And mm-hmm. y'all were like, what yeah because i've never i've never heard about that ever yeah, yeah. like ever in my life well there are a in um um calabria the calabria foundation which is one of the early spin outs from moonlight mm-hmm. uh it's a my family's philanthropic foundation okay. we do a lot of different things at calabria but one of the things i'm most proud of is what we call Calabria College. And mm-hmm. it's all the, well, we don't call it financial literacy, we call it financial competency. Mm-hmm. It's the fact that most people don't know what FICO stands for. They know it has something to do with credit, right, they know it right. has something to do with right. Well, FICO stands for Fair Isaac Credit Organization. See, I didn't even know. Yeah, most people mm-hmm. don't know that the three credit unions, TransUnion, TRW, and Equifax, years ago, partnered and said here's the calculation that determines your fico score and the scale is from 300 to 850 850 you could get money from satan 300 god ain't even giving you money and the average fico score for most americans is remember 640 right yeah right around there right Mm -hmm. around there and that's fair do y'all know what a beacon score is no no b-e-a-c-o-n for anything that's brand new, ten thousand dollars or more, like a new car or a new mortgage or a hundred thousand dollar diamond ring or a fifty thousand dollar mink coat, mm-hmm. you have a beacon score. Ninety five percent of Americans have never heard that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you go to a new car salesman, that's what they live and breathe. Do y'all know what a Paydex score is? No, nope. I've heard of it, but I'm, yeah. I don't know though. I'm Paydex score is corporate debt. So okay. when y'all have not so sober podcast, mm-hmm. 
do y'all have the corporate structure of an LLC or a single member uh, company? Have y'all domiciled and filed paperwork? No. Okay. So right now, key, key thing, not yet. So the reason there are different corporate structures, like a sole proprietor, an uh, incorporated company, an LLC, and others, is how your personal assets are protected. In the tax law and in legal law, the Calabria Foundation, Inc., it's a 501c3 mm -hmm. nonprofit. The 501c3 literally is a reference to the tax code that says if Calabria makes money and we make a lot of money, I don't have to pay tax on the profit we make. Okay. So most people think nonprofit is you're not supposed to make profit. That's 100% no, wrong. 501c3 means as long as I'm making profit, I don't pay tax on it. And I love giving this example. The most profitable nonprofit on earth is the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation up in Seattle. They earned $6 billion in profit and didn't pay a penny on it in tax. Damn. Well, that's fucking evil. That's wrong. No, it's not, because they put $4 billion back into operations for malaria vaccines and dengue fever vaccines. And Bill Gates will go down in history as one of the obviously wealthiest, but one of the greatest humanitarians and lifesavers on earth because he took the risk to start Microsoft, stole some shit from Apple, but told him, fuck you, that's a great story, by the way. Anyway, <laughs> but he still has $2 billion left from last year. Well, $2 billion's a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, so, it is. Saying he didn't pay a tax on it. That's not wrong. It's not right. It's America. Yeah. He's not... Screwing the little man. The tax code was approved by our elected officials. Well, and that's what I've always said is that the, the, the tax code and the laws are literally meant for you not to work for the man anymore. Well, that's it, the only way to really make it. I mean, otherwise, working for the man, I mean, you're just going to be. Obviously, we have to have people at the bottom of the totem pole. Right. But the way it all is engineered is literally meant businesses for businesses well the i'll take a slight disgruntledness to that comment okay because okay. working for the man for me has a negative connotation so the 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 employer that you work for mm -hmm. the man had the balls to take a risk years ago oh yeah and now they've got a company that's for paying sure. your fucking salary yeah, for, sure. for sure right but a lot of people think well, fuck him or her, because there's some female yeah, yeah, CEOs. Definitely, yeah. Um, well, they're just they're they're just screwing everybody. The little guy. Well, they had the balls to take the risk mm -hmm. and uh, try to make this thing work. Right. My first seven companies are dead and in the grave because I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Yeah. So, come company number eight, I hit the jackpot. And 9, 10, 11, 12 after that, things are going okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, again, it gets back to having a thick skin and don't take no that, right. that you're a personal piece of shit. It yeah. says your idea didn't work. Your pie didn't work. Your podcast didn't work today. Mm -hmm. It'll work tomorrow. Exactly. If you're passionate about it and you go tell your neighbors about it, they'll start telling others and so on and so on and so yeah, on. Yeah. So the different corporate structures are how, um, like the Calabria Foundation Inc. is looked at in the law industry as a person. So if Calabria on our mobile medical clinic screws up and kills somebody in a surgery, mm -hmm. they will sue the company, the person called Calabria Foundation Inc., yes. And my car and my wife and my money in my personal bank is shielded. Okay. Now, another facet 
to shield your personal assets is burying them in what's called a blind, irrevocable trust. So I have nothing in my name. Chris Pantuso doesn't own anything. Mm -hmm. The Cal Ripken Jr. Blind, irrevocable trust owns everything. So when I screw up at Calabria and they sue Calabria, they can't get my stuff and they can't even see inside the trust because it's blind. Mm -hmm. What that means is it's a legal document, been around for decades in the United States and uh, and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Actually, not in uh, England. You, that, uh, it's illegal to have a blind trust. My wife doesn't even know what's in my blind trust. There's only two people on earth, me and my estate attorney. Now, I'm not a dick. When I die, a codicil, which is a rule, a rule kicks in where I'm out of the trust because I'm dead, yeah. and Veronica, my wife, goes in, mm -hmm. okay. and she sees everything, the fact that I bought a village in southern Italy. So, yeah, I know, honey. I bought a village in southern Italy because <laughs> Veronica and I, my bride and I, do not intermingle finances. Mm -hmm. I love the woman. We married. I got the marriage certificate, but I'm not losing half my shit for yeah. a third time. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And she has her own money, and she's not going to lose her shit. Yeah. So she's a very smart woman that manages differently than I do. We talked about in the first lady. <laughs> but she's the one who taught me cash is king. Yeah. And that's uh, her FICO score is actually pretty damn good because she maintains one or two credit cards purely for that reason is to keep her FICO score uh, up um, because we are, uh, we're, we put an offer on an $800,000 house back in Texas. Um, when they saw that my FICO score was 546, I thought the mortgage broker was going to have a heart attack. <laughs> and I told him, well, don't freak out. Cause when I showed him my uh, uh, net worth statement, he goes, Oh, you, you can write a check for 800 grand. So I know that sounds like I'm badass, but I am fucking badass. So <laughs> right. the the right. but but the point is, I shit just like y'all do. Yeah, I bleed exactly. just like y'all do. Y'all would have never known I could have written a check for an eight hundred thousand dollar house unless I said it. Exactly. I, my shit stinks just like yeah, everybody sure. else's. Sure. So, but it's because I pulled myself out of bankruptcy twelve years ago. I, I have this desire to pay it forward by coming on a podcast exactly. and talking to people like y'all and and y'all didn't know what a beacon score was i didn't know what a beacon score was exactly y'all didn't know what a paydex score was which is corporate debt um y'all didn't know what standard and poor's was you didn't know what an index fund was it it's not rocket science. It's just we're all ignorant. Yeah. I, I'm fucking ignorant. I don't. I don't know how to do podcasting. Y'all guys are teaching me how to do podcasting. <laughs> so I'm retarded, and that's not an HR violation. <laughs> it just means I'm slow. I'm like, like I kept hitting the microphone earlier, and and Caleb was like, "Hey, man, you might not want to hit the microphone so much." <laughs> Because y'all know what you're doing. I don't know what the fuck yeah, I'm you doing. Never had to worry about it before. Yeah, yeah, right, right, and so. Yeah. What what I like about y'all guys is y'all are y'all are comfortable enough with your ignorance, and ignorance just means you're not educated. Yes, yes. It, people put negative connotations and baggage on words. They're words. So whether it's understanding tax strategies or or legal strategies, um, how to protect assets, how to grow assets, because. Mm -hmm. When, when you learn the buying cycle and you're educating people on how to sell, your assets are going to grow. Yes, well, yes. Once you grow assets, you don't want every Tom, Dick, and Harry taking exactly. them. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you want to protect that. Um, I've, I, I love telling the story of my father, Blassie. Um, I, I had no idea how much money my dad had. This dude was a multimillionaire, and he dressed like y'all. <laughs> not not dogging y'all. Um I remember going to uh, uh, USAA. It's a big insurance company in San Antonio. Uh, all, they also have a bank. They also have a private wealth management division, which I didn't know. Yeah. 
but they knew dad because <laughs> dad had all of his money at USAA. And as he was getting up in age and he started to go downhill health wise, uh, he appointed me executor of his estate. And he said, you know, son, I'm going to take you to USAA and we're going to, I'm going to open the kimono and you're going to see how much money. <laughs> I said, all right. Cause, uh, so we, we get up to USAA and, they open up the binder and the executive summary, and I see zeros, 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 followed by a couple of ones. I was like, shit, Dad. <laughs> what? You're a cheap bastard. Why don't, why, don't you take mom, why don't you take mom to Italy or France or go buy her the moon because you can afford it? <laughs> he goes, son, you know I hate traveling. So you take her. I said, so I did. <laughs> I took mom to Paris, France. I took her to Cancun, Mexico. Took her to. She didn't want to go to Australia, but yeah, how was Cancun? We planned on going to uh, our honeymoon. Bad ass. Yeah. Fun, fun, fun. Yeah, fairly inexpensive too. It is. It is. Yeah, we were yeah. looking it up. Uh, we're going in October. Yeah. And it's. I think it's like thirteen hundred a person for yeah. a week. That ain't bad, man. That ain't bad so, at all. Yeah. 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 And so my my gripe to Pop was, you know, you've got this amount of money. Go enjoy it. And he's like, nah, nah, it's just not me. (laughs) Because, you know, mom might get sick and she'll need it for her hospital bills. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, Dad, you got six six sons and daughters. We'll we'll be there to help out. And he looks at me and he goes, you think Mike's going to help mom? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, dad knew who the strong ones and knew the weak ones are. Right. Because right? yeah. we all have dysfunctions in our yeah, family. Exactly. Everybody sure, does. Sure. And so I remember telling Pop, I said, well, especially after mom died, uh, dad was lonely as hell. He lasted about a year, almost two years after mom passed. And I told Pop, I said, man, go spend this money. Mom's gone. He goes, I don't like to travel, son. What am I going to do? <laughs> he goes, uh, you know, the, the grandkids are going to have to go to Texas A and M. I got to pay for their college. I said, no, that's my siblings' responsibility. Go enjoy this. Go. He goes, nah. <laughs> so my three daughters, mm-hmm. there ain't going to be shit left for y'all. I'm going to spend everything. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go buy the south of France. I'm going to buy. Uh, Angels Envy and Maker's that's some damn good Maker's Mark too that is Maker's Mark thank you Maker's Mark throw some money this way Maker's Mark <laughs> we're, we're getting you in front of people <laughs> yeah, 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 something yeah, yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I'm saying and that's true because I would have never bought Maker's Mark because I fall in love with Angels Envy but this stuff yeah I'm going to buy some of that that's, that's pretty good so wh- whether it's tax strategies, whether it's selling strategies, whether it's uh, legal strategies, Moonlight Advisors has, we feel, some very good competency to help, again, not knowledgeable people. Just like I don't know a thing about podcasting. Y'all are teaching me. Y'all didn't know about blind, irrevocable no, trust. No, no. Y'all didn't know about FICO scores. No. And, and so many people, especially Americans, think their self-worth is tied up in their FICO score. Ah, who gives a shit? <laughs> who, who, yeah, what, really, what a really. FICO score means is you're dumb enough to live on credit. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And you're too stupid to live on cash. And you're too prideful to have four uh, uh, roommates and go get a second job. It's all that, that pain and chaos of who fucking wants four roommates i don't want fucking foreign roommates but if i'm passionate about podcasting or or starting a new company for a short period of time maybe it's 12 months yeah yeah, i can live with three idiots right yeah and then i'm gonna have more money than them and i'll go buy my own house exactly and i'll buy a second house and turn it into airbnb so it's paying my mortgage so i'm living free in house one while house two pays for house one that that's what our goal is here is to buy this duplex here so that way the we can rent out the next door uh, and yeah. it just pays for every damn thing. Right, right. So now real estate doesn't always go up in value. Yeah. No. Everybody oh, thinks yeah. it does. When when my sinister ex wife and I, the second ex wife, were in Chicago, home values were going down bad, bad, bad. So it's a fallacy that real estate always appreciates, always goes up. Mm-mm. 
and and way too many people had mortgages they should have never been approved for because they couldn't afford mm -hmm. and then they went and got two or three other ones because oh man real estate is a money maker it's guaranteed robert kiyosawi of uh, rich man uh, rich dad poor dad mm -hmm. uh loves debt and on the corporate side it makes a ton of sense to be in yeah. debt because it's a write-off right on the personal side you are retarded if you have a lot of debt so whatever you do running your household from a financial perspective is 180 degrees different than in corporate america so in corporate america if i need a fleet of vehicles mm -hmm. i'm leasing them yeah i ain't buying them new no. in i'm not buying them used i'm leasing them new in my world i have never ever bought a brand new vehicle and i never ever lease I pay cash for yeah. a piece of shit beater, and I go to a Chilton magazine, a Chilton catalog, to learn how to change the oil and the timing belt. Because now we got YouTube where an idiot mm. ignoramus like me can change a timing belt. Exactly. Because YouTube tells me from A to B to C to D what to do. Exactly. You just have to have the time and the realization that I'm going to fuck up but I'm only going to kill myself. I'm yeah, not going to exactly. kill anybody yep. else. So yep, yep. don't don't worry that you can't do it because, of course, you can if you make the decision. Just yep. like we were talking about being happy, make the decision. Yep. So that that's kind of my soapbox for the day, for the night. Okay. Well, I guess that leaves us in a perfect time for the yes. new segment of the Not So Sober podcast that we brought in last episode. Some of y'all that watch, y'all seen it. We're going to bring it back again this episode. Yes. Got another round of Pick Your Poison. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Do I have to keep it clean? Classic game of Would You Rather. No. no, you do not. This is the Not So Sober Podcast. We all done had a couple drinks. <laughs> we're, supposed, we're supposed to, you know, we are all yeah, yeah, We are yeah, all yeah. men on here, <laughs> you know. It is <coughs> some... Some viewers are for some, or I mean, some yeah. podcasts are for some viewers. We're for whoever gives a fuck. <laughs> I'll drink to that one. God, man, that is really smooth. I, is. I had no idea Makers was that smooth. Yeah, I mean, especially once you get out of, I mean, once you get into the higher proof, I mean, yeah. the higher, like, it, it, it's, some of the stuff is nuts. If those cards are backwards, I mean, flip those like that. All right, everybody's going to pick two cards randomly. I'll take that too. Pick your poison. Okay, how's this game work? All right, so what we're going to do is each person goes around and reads off both of their cards. Your first card... You have to compare it to your second card. Okay. And you have to choose. Everybody has to go through and give their opinion on what they would rather do and of why. those cards uh, and okay. why. Yep. Okay. So we're going to start off over there in the corner with TZ All again. Right. Let's see what's happening. I had this one last time, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> the same one? Well, yeah, the same one. The exact Both same of one. them? No, this one. Oh, okay. This one. Yes. Have your keyboard randomly reorganize itself every day. <laughs> Oof. Or never have internet access again. <laughs> oh, rearrange that keyboard. <laughs> rearrange the keyboard. <laughs> Amen. I'll Amen. figure that out, but Amen. I got to get to the internet. <laughs> I got to. I How, go? What would you do about in that situation? Oh, like, likewise, yeah. likewise. Yeah? Okay, Even though okay. what's interesting is I get like 600 emails a day and – I've taught most of my team and most of my prospects and customers, if you email me something, text me that you email me <laughs> something. <laughs> Say, hey, idiot boy, the contract is waiting for you. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll go right. look for you. Yeah, you need it for your box. Is, yeah. you know, you My email box is crazy. Uh, me, of course, I'm the same thing. Yeah. Just, just likewise, I'd rather have my keyboard 
uh, reorganized because yeah. I do a lot with the internet and yeah. you know, even this podcast wouldn't be a yeah. thing without the internet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We couldn't get it to people <laughs> exactly. without the internet. So, so I, I definitely would need my internet. So yeah. All right, Chris, what are we looking at over there? All right. Have toes on your hands <laughs> and fingers on your feet or do a sink full of someone else's dishes once a day. I do the dishes. Yeah. 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 I, I do the dishes. I, I probably I, do the dishes. I mean, just that'd imagine. be weird to be I the mean, only person. You go person. to pick your nose with your fucking yeah, yeah, pinky yeah. toe or some shit. I mean, <laughs> you, can, it, you ain't like getting feet. no boogers yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I've got these nasty monkey feet too. Yeah. So <laughs> the big old, big old toe. My 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 bride is like, what, what the fuck is that? Yeah. When, when we first got naked, and I was like, I said. You you hurt my feelings. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I got, hurt my feelings. Yeah, girl. yeah, yeah. So no, I want I don't want my monkey toes on my hands. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think my girl would like that. You know, rubbing yeah. on her and a dog. Nah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think she'd enjoy <laughs> that. So, so I just crazy. I just get to rubbing her with my <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what all about right. you, Caleb? What do so, you got? So we looking at have all your joints squeaky squeak loudly whenever you move or. Only be able to enter and exit buildings via windows. Ooh. Ooh, that is tough. <laughs> yeah, ooh. So what was the first one again? I'm sorry. Have all your joints squeak loudly whenever you move. Oh, that's or only irritating. be able to enter and exit buildings via windows. I'm fat. I'm not climbing. Yeah, I, I, don't think, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> my, well, what if I got to get out of the fourth floor? Exactly. exactly. My exactly. fat ass is dying. Yeah, exactly. And that's where. And I, I work on the fourth floor. <laughs> oh damn, that's horrible. Yeah. Yeah, I go to a lot of different buildings, uh, you know, in my job. I, I travel everywhere, go to a different bunch of different. So you'd have to jump out yeah. the window. Yeah, especially yeah. like with, you know, I got a cart full of whatever, whatever. Like, I, or you, going? Four clear, you, you know, whatever I'm using like, to deliver it with, yeah. I got to jump out the window with it. Like, no, I'm going to just go ahead and. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Be, let let so arthritis so kick in. Yeah, yeah it'll yeah, be yeah. so irritating though. Just it would be every time you move. Yeah, you got to think about how much you move, bro. You move a ridiculous amount. I mean, every joint. Yeah. Every so joint. that means your finger. I mean, everything, everything. you do is just screeching yeah. all day long. <laughs> That'd be horrible, man. I'd so. buy earplugs from my <laughs> from my coworkers. Yeah. You'd have yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like everybody. The worst one is be with your woman trying to have some good time at night and all. You're just. <laughs> 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 like, is that the bed? Yeah, hey, yeah. Mind yeah. your business. Mind your business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just stay down there, baby. Stay down there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But all right, y'all, we did a little longer podcast than usual. Yeah. We wanted to get the full insight on what Chris Pantuso had to offer us yes. today. Uh, but for today's episode, that'll wrap it up here. Make sure y'all go check out Moonlight Advisory. Yeah, learn, uh, learn some stuff. For as real. you can see, very knowledgeable man, bringing a lot of knowledge to people, willing to uh, rise and create better businesses. If you got some questions or whatever, uh, Love. He's the man to go to. Well, well, I, I, I'm one of them, and let me tell you how you can get in contact yes, with me. Yes, please tell us. Please. I, I'm on LinkedIn, but I hate websites. <laughs> uh, everybody thinks if they put a website up, 90% of the battle is done. No, no, no. I know that. I so know that call me. Don't email me, because I mentioned I get 600 emails a day. My cell number is area code 210-608-608. 2184 reference the fact that you saw me on not so sober podcast with tz and caleb yeah please do and text me that you saw me on the podcast do not call me because i do not answer the phone <laughs> so text me and say hey idiot boy i saw you on not so sober podcast do you have 30 minutes to talk and if I don't answer your text in five minutes, it means I'm dead. So, no, I won't have 30 minutes to talk. <laughs> I always answer texts. Always. He's and, very, very, very punctual. I and, mean, like, that's it's good. So, the reason I always give out my cell number is because from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., Monday through Sunday, it's on and it's on my person. Yep. So, don't go to a website. To learn about me and my team and my services, call me. Yep. 
don't be a pussy. Call me or text me and say, hey, idiot boy, do you have 30 minutes to talk? Because as I mentioned to Caleb and the TZ, the, we call it a one-hour discovery call. That's free. Yep. If I haven't communicated to you enough value in one hour for you to give me five grand in a retainer, you either don't have five grand and I don't want to talk to you any further, or I'm stupid and I haven't communicated enough. I've got 14 companies that we've spun out of our startup accelerator that I own 15% minority ownership in. So on paper, I'm a multimillionaire. Mm-hmm. I have 0.8% in one company. I have 0.8% of a pre-IPO company that's valued at $1.4 billion. 0.8% so, times 1.4 is $22 million. Mm-hmm. That and toilet paper can wipe my ass. <laughs> Damn right. So Damn that right. it doesn't mean shit until the company matures enough to get listed on NASDAQ, which is a gargantuan feat to have done. And there's so many potholes. So I love telling people that on paper, I'm fucking loaded. Mm-hmm. But if you look at my bank statement, Cobalt Federal Credit Union almost <laughs> shut down my checking account. <laughs> yeah, so... But I've got a decent amount in the victory funds, and which track the the victory fund. The victory fund tracks what stock index? The Nasdaq. The Nasdaq and the or the S and P five. Yeah, yeah. 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 see, see. Yeah. I, took me a I was going to say I didn't remember the victory. I was like, well, oh, well, well victory, victory fund, uh, victory capital. Okay, is like a. Um, uh, Fidelity Mutual. Oh, okay. They're, they're okay, large okay, okay. Uh, I know Fidelity. investment yeah. houses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, know I was Fidelity. gonna say I didn't hear the big. That's yeah, why I was yeah. lost. I'm like, uh, I don't remember hearing about this. I've been listening pretty damn yeah, good, yeah, yeah. but so give give me a call again if you're a passionate person that wants to learn how to monetize your passion. Mm-hmm. We've got some pretty good competency to help. We ain't the only good good startup. Uh, accelerator in Omaha there's several of them yeah. but I guarantee you we're one of the better ones because I'll end it with this my dad who started Moonlight mm-hmm. taught me to be a capitalist pig my mom taught me to be an ethical capitalist pig most venture capitalists will take 85% ownership and write you a check nobody takes a 15% minority ownership and never writes you a check. That's why I'm an ethical capitalist pig. I will go knock on doors with you to show you how to sell the four stages of the buying cycle and the four P's of marketing. It ain't rocket science. It's just most people don't know. Because they don't do this every day for 33 years. I do. I've been making... This is going to sound shitty, but I've been making six figures every year for 20 years plus and came close to making seven figures once. So, woohoo. So, so fucking what? Okay. I'm here drinking beer, smoking cigars, hanging out with y'all guys because I enjoy it. Yeah. So, you're down to earth. Yeah, I'm passionate about helping people monetize their passions. Right. Because if you kind of lock into a passion, mm-hmm. You're not going to wake up every day pissed off and being shitty at the world and your mate and your kids and your neighbors. Mm -hmm. You're going to have rose-colored glasses and be in a fucking good mood, (laughs) which is what I like. I like to hang around people like y'all. So I'll I'll shut up. Thank you very much for being on the podcast. No, man. Thank Thank you for joining us on the podcast because, again, like I said, our biggest thing is helping uh, up-and-coming businesses and whatnot. So. Yeah. Having somebody like you that they could reach out to to hopefully grow their business even farther, get yeah. them into the next door. You know, I feel like that was a really big thing of why I wanted you on the podcast so bad. On top of just your personality and who you were, just Thank the you, hour or two that we were talking that day, mm-hmm. just felt like we really needed to lock it in. So. I really wanted to thank you for joining us on the podcast. You're welcome back anytime. But for today's episode, that's it. We're going to wrap it up. And remember, drink responsibly. See ya.